Okay, sorry. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome to Paint Night. We're going to paint loose bouquet. And okay, I just have a little bit of household noises going on because life goes on. All right. So say hello. Tell me where you're from. Um, uh, tell me if you've painted with me before or if this is your first time. Um, uh, as for, you know, introductions, I'm Luba Carlson. I'm the host of this group. I believe that every person is, a cre is creative. I think that everybody has this little creative spark in them. And um, I'm super excited that you decided to join me today and exercise that little creative spark. So um, we're painting loose flowers today. This little thing. I'm working on 16 by 20 canvas. I will try and move it around a little bit so that uh, the areas that I'm painting are more in frame so that you can see exactly what's happening. This is my stack of paper plates that I use for my paints, uh, for my palettes. So um, as for colors, we're just going to use the standard set that I try to, like, I really try to stick to it for all my free classes because it really helps beginners to not have to go and spend a whole lot of money, right, on a beginner set. So we're going to go and we're going to go ahead and use titanium white, cerulean blue, phthalo blue, uh, primary red, magenta primary yellow lemon yellow and i think that's it and we're not going to need the black at all so if you have it that's good but if you don't have it that's also good okay um i am streaming through stream yards so um if you do not give it permission to show your name all i get on my side is facebook user instead of your name so um <coughs> excuse me here I can even show you. See, this is what I'm getting. So um, if you want me to refer to you by name, please let me know what your name is. Okay, I am going to say hello, hello, Ashley. You are very welcome. I have people from Minneapolis, New York, London, Ontario, Ontario Canada, blah, 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 language, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Uh, Victoria, Canada. Hello. Uh, first time, Franklin, Tennessee. Welcome. What else do I see here? First time, Lana. Welcome, Lana. Montclair, New Jersey. Welcome. Uh, w -U -V. W -V -V. What's a W V? I don't know. Okay. Hello. Hello, Michigan. Michigan, I guess. Okay, so I still... Um, um, all right. Okay, welcome, everybody. Tell me if this is your first time painting with me or you have already painted something. And if you have painted before, let me know what it was that you painted with me. I would like to know. And um, we're going to start. So um, in guides, you could find the tracer for this piece. You do not have to have it. I really like doing, going, you know, freehand and just have fun with it. But having a tracer really helps with proportions and perspective and like figuring out, you know, what composition, what goes where. So if you need that, go ahead and put it on your canvas right away. Um, what else? Brushes, brushes, uh, we're going to use flats and rounds. And probably it's going to be a large flat and a medium flat and a medium round and a small round. Maybe a large round. We'll see what goes. We'll see how it goes. Okay. You will need water. You will need your paper towels. Um, I also really like to use a small palette knife to mix my paint. 
And we're going to mix colors. We're going to make a lot of mess. So um, if you need to cover up, like wear something to protect your clothing, because acrylics is not washable. Once it's there, it's there. Okay. All right. Who's excited? Tell me. Tell me who's excited. Hi, Diane. Hi, Carolyn from Ohio. West Virginia. Da. I, yes. Welcome, West Virginia. <laughs> oh, third class. Woohoo. You did the cornflower and the American flag heart. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, Suzanne's asking canvas size. I'm painting on 16 by 20. Okay, Lisa and Julie from Tucson, Arizona. I've been to Tucson. I was there. I know that. Like, when I first moved to the States, that was 2007? Yeah. Wow. It was a long time ago. Okay. Radwa from Canada. <laughs> Thank you for the late ad. Somebody says, you're very welcome. Like, the last, uh, normally, the 20 minutes before I hit broadcast button is like, I'm like that crazy cat typing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> trying to grab everything, put it all together. Then, like if I have an extra minute, I try to add people who are a little bit, a little bit later. All right, let's paint. I'm going to change to my desk view so that you can see exactly my desk, what's happening. Let's turn it. Sadly, I cannot, like, I could have gone maybe a little bit higher, but I cannot move my camera any higher than it is right now, sadly. Which is why you're missing the bottom of the painting, but we're not going to need it because that's going to be the, like, the table or the shelf, you can probably say, right underneath the vase. So this is all going to be good. Okay, so welcome everybody who is the first time here, who is who's been here before. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to load this baby up with some white, cerulean blue. And that I'm putting a whole lot of paint on here. Halo blue. I think I'm going to use two palettes because uh, I always make a big mess mixing colors. Um, uh, I'm going to put my primary red on here. Hello, Debra. Uh, Debra. Sonia says, at school, I have to put my dog camera on a box. Oh, my goodness. If, if I had the third camera, I would have shown you my table, and you'd see that there is no room for another box because my laptop, that's my... Uh, the, cam the, the camera and the screen that shows me your comments, it's already sitting here on the box. <laughs> I just ran out of space. Okay. All right. So I have some uh, primary red and then magenta. And let's do some yellow. Primary yellow. Whoa, that was a lot, but that's okay. And some lemon yellow. And so normally I have a spot over here for my black, but we're not going to need it. Give me just one second. I'm going to put my paints. I'm going to take them off my table real quick so that I have more, like, it'll give me maybe an inch and a half on the other side of my canvas so that I can move things around if I have to. Okay, that's all good. So let's mix our palette first. I think this would be a lot more fun to do than going really step by step. Okay. It looks like the color like color chart. Yeah, doesn't it? It's so fun. I just love it. Okay, so let's uh, mix our background first. So for the background, for the background, we're going to need, oh, and I put it away. I'm going to need a lot more white than what I have here. So a lot of this is based on white. So here's my white. And I know for 16 by 20, I'm going to need a good amount. So, okay. 
and I want a warmer background with this. So I'm going to go with warmer yellow. So I'm just going to grab some warmer yellow right here. Just put that in there. Okay. And I'm going to grab some of this primary red and just mix until I get the color that I want to have in my background. So what I'm looking for, I'm looking for a very neutral beige, which would be the wall. Okay. And then the, um, the table, it's pretty much the same beige color, but it's a little bit darker. So we're going to have, we will split this and then we'll add, okay, I really like this. Now I'm going to move some to the side, just like that, just in half, just divide it, split it in half. And I'm going to pray to God that this is enough paint for 16 by 20. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Okay, clean your palette knife before you're mixing colors. I totally forgot to clean it before I dipped it into red. So I'm going to grab a little bit more yellow because I want this more saturated. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is going to look so good. Okay, wipe it off, and then I'm going to pick up some of that red that has that yellow on it. Just going to clean it up a little. Let me see. Is this going to get too red? Is it too much red? Let's see. We might. I might need to go back and add even more yellow to this because I don't want the pink. Yeah, it's a little bit more on the pink side. So let's go grab a little bit more of this uh, primary yellow. Yes, this is going to get us exactly where we want to be. Very good. Okay. Well, so there is that. We've got this. Okay, now let's play with some other color variations. Um, give yourself like a few, a, uh, a few spots of white if you want. I'm keeping that other white clean because I'm going to need this for adding it to other things. We'll see. Okay, so let's make our pinks. So with this white, I'm just going to grab some of the magenta, good amount, probably a couple of these. One, two, mix it in. No, oh, yeah, it'll take more than that. That's okay. Clean it up because we don't want them mess this up and grab some more there now we're talking okay so this can sit for now i do not need it perfectly mixed right now just to have the the tone so that I know what I'm doing. I'm going to grab some cerulean blue and drop it into this white right here. And then I'm going to go back and grab some more magenta for this one. Just to make another, this is going to be like more like lavender purple. Okay, that's good to go. 
What else do we need? We're going to need some light green. And for light green, I'm going to use some of the lemon yellow right on top of this white. I'm going to put a very good amount of lemon yellow on there. Just like that. Okay. And then grab some cerulean blue. Not too much. That is going to give us light, almost chartreuse green. Perfect. Okay, now what else? A piece of a little bit of um, uh, cerulean blue and uh, some of the magenta right on there. No white with this one, just cerulean blue and magenta. Let's make purple. Ooh, yummy, yummy purple. Oh, I love it. Okay, um, let's grab Halo Blue. Okay, Fable Blue and Primary Yellow, right on top of that. Uh, more yellow than blue, so we'll grab double yellow, one blue. And oh my gosh, I really do hope you're not finding this overwhelming. <laughs> this is, color mixing is an awesome, awesome, awesome skill to have. You know what more yellow needed here? Uh, because then you don't need to go and buy every single color on the chart, right? And if you take class from somebody else who is not me, right? And they tell you, oh, you need this color. You just say, okay, I can mix it. I can make it happen. There. Okay. So um, this is what we need. This is what we're gonna be using. <laughs> tell me you're not overwhelmed. All right, so. This is how I like to arrange my uh, stuff. I keep my palettes to my right. And this way I can move around and, you know, do things. So hold on just one second. I'm going to put that white away for now. And I'm going to scooch this over. Just a tiny, tiny, whoa, sorry about that. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Oh, not too far. That was a little bit too far. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, okay. Good to go. Good to go, good to go. All right, so grab the largest, if you're working on canvas, if you're working on paper, you don't need to do this. If you're working on canvas, grab your largest flat brush that you have, make it wet, okay? And then just brush a little bit of water onto your canvas. So that's one way you can do this. If you have a misting bottle, that is like, that's the new piece because that really does it super fast. And then you can just spread it on your canvas. And uh, why I do this is because canvas is gonna soak in your paint because canvas is so dry when it comes out from the store. You know, it's been sitting there in that package for months. And so your canvas is thirsty. 
super thirsty and um, yeah it just makes sense i'm just grabbing my my headband to hold my hair back okay so oh, let's mark if you do so i'm doing the um ah, sorry um so i am not using the tracer okay so you guys can If, if you have need the tracer, you can. Okay. Okay. Somebody is asking me to show the colors again. Okay. So we started with this white, cerulean blue, ultramarine, uh, sorry, phalo blue, um, primary red, magenta, primary yellow, lemon yellow. And this is what we mixed it in, which is pink, lavender, chartreuse, purple, green very light apricot and darker apricot it's not very it's not very beige but this is what i wanted it to be today hey dallas hey illinois welcome all right so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna break up the canvas visually into three parts right just imagine that it's broken into thirds the top part is going to be lighter the bottom part is going to be darker and we're just going to grab some of that light beige and just start putting it don't feel like you have to go like in any certain direction it's like it's just like this okay just go boom 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 and then <laughs> just put it on I'm just hoping that I made enough paint. Oh, and I just picked up some green, and that's fine. It's just another. Just work it in. If that happened, just work it in. And here's going to be my line. Kind of my visual where I'm going to stop with this. You guys are kind of sort of my experiment here because I've never taught making a uh, mix in the palette before painting. We usually mix as we go, but I thought this would be so much fun. So flip your brush as you go here. Okay, go back and forth, up and down, crisscross. You want to have, you do not want to have like straight lines painted on here. Okay. So we have our first, the wall. Now next is going to be the table. So I'm just using the same brush. I am not rinsing it out. I'm just grabbing more of this darker color, okay? And I'm doing the same, pretty much the same thing, except for I'm gonna try and make some sort of a decent line here to just break it up. If you wanna paint your sides, you can, but they are really not, this is not necessary. Try to avoid adding more water to your brush. That's kind of a thing that um, a lot of, I see people do a lot. Like if the paint is not moving the way they want it to move, they put water on the brush, right? This is not exactly what you want to do. Who do I have here? First time here from Idaho. My second try with any painting. Probably being asked, but are these recorded so we can over... Yes, you can go over this again after this is done. Hello, people from Ohio. Hi, Chandra. Uh, Mary, Maryville. 
San Diego, California. Hey, hey, welcome. So yes, everything, absolutely every lesson that I teach in this group is recorded. And then I add the uh, YouTube link to those lessons because it's easier to watch replays on YouTube. Um, you don't get distracted with all the comments and, you know, all of that YouTube stuff. I mean, Facebook stuff. So uh, you can just get in the guides and watch the replay. Also, we have more than 40 different paintings and guides. If you haven't seen that yet, okay, I am pretty happy with how this turned out. Doesn't need to be. Perfect, because it's very loose. It's a very loose painting. Just have fun with that. All right. So if this is super, super wet, I recommend grabbing a uh, blow dryer. I just hit it with a blow dryer. Okay. Uh, somebody's asking me where the traceable are is the traceables are all in guides you need to go to the top of this group and then find the word guides and click on that and it'll take you to the library and all of them are there they're all there okay y'all I'm gonna mute you guys for like a minute because I'm gonna hit my canvas with the blow dryer right here and I don't want it to make crazy noise into your ears, all right? Oopsie daisy. Okay. Okay. I'm back. Um, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I got to show this comment, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That um, It means a lot. Thank you. Also, you guys, I appreciate it, the, these things, you know, they, how do I put that? This way. There. I appreciate these things and these things. Not that I'm asking for them. Well, I am. <laughs> okay, so let's do the vase. The vase is kind of light blue. And for the vase, we're going to use a medium size flat. Okay. And we're going to start with white. So you're going to fill this whole brush with white. Let me show you what I have here, right here, right here. Okay, and then you're going to dip it just a little. See, I just got a tiny, tiny bit of phalo blue here. All right, and we're kind of going to find the middle. Sometimes I like placing my flowers in the middle. Sometimes I like to scooch them over a little bit. This painting is in the middle, so that's where we're going to put it. We're going to put three to four fingers from the edge 
from the edge up. Okay, so I'm going to do three, four here, four fingers. So that's my mark. And I am literally just going to paint the smile. Okay, and then I'm going to start going up from that smile, just go straight up. Just bring that paint straight up. Okay, and then grab more white, no more blue, just white. And just start blending it in, kind of making it work together. Thank you for the heart and the heads up and heart from Arkansas. Thank you. And not the heads up, I'm sorry, thumbs up and the heart from Arkansas. Thank you. So just keep going. Yeah, just like that famous fish, just keep swimming. We are not going to worry about the top of the vase. Why? Because all of this is going to be covered with flowers. So why even worry about that? You want to kind of maybe do a little bit more work on the bottom, but mostly pull your strokes from bottom to the top. Sweet. Let's add a little bit of shading to this right away. So we're going to be using the same brush. You see, you kind of have a chisel tip now because you've been using it flat, right? Like that. So let's grab a little bit of phthalo blue just on the tip. And go to the um, um, right side of your vase. Add that like this see just touching with your chisel tip now wipe this brush on the paper towel just clean it up okay and now go back and uh, blend this in the best you can there like that okay and it just added a little bit of shading if you feel like you want it a little bit more Repeat. There, that's what I wanted. I wanted a little bit more pronounced side, just on one side like that. And we're gonna leave this be. Now let's clean up that um, um, flat brush. Brush care tip, do not leave your brushes in your water. Clean them right away and uh, get excess moisture out with the paper towel and then move on to your next brush. Do not leave your brushes in the water. It ruins your brushes. Trust me. Been, been there, done that. Don't want to do it again. Okay. I kind of ran out of my paper towel, so I'm going to grab another one. And this is what I do with my paper towels. I get three and then I kind of fold them in half. And this way I can wipe it off here and then I can kind of open it and use it as a, like every side of this is going to be used eventually. All right. Okie dokie. So I really like to start with my greenery. For the greenery, we're going to start with our round brushes. And I think 
for 16 by 20, I would like a larger round brush, but I, I know I have it right here for the leaves. That is, it says it's number 10, but it really is more like number 20 because this is number six. Look, number six and number 10 next to each other. That's like a big difference, right? I'm going to use the big one for my leaves. If you do not have such a big brush, you can still use it. You can you can use your smaller one. Just you will have to do a couple more strokes with that, okay? So let's do the leaves first. I am going to wet this brush, make it wet. It's just wet. Grab my green that we made, the dark green. Yeah, not the, not the chartreuse color, the dark green, okay? And I'm going to think, the, again, people with uh, the sketch on, you, you know exactly your placement, right? But for this one, I want one of my leaves hanging out here and go like this way. So this is going to be my first leaf right here. I'm going to touch lightly to the canvas, watch, and then push hard and then lift up and they have a leaf okay grab some more paint maybe put one over here touch lightly and move and I, I can come back and fix i know that on screen it probably looks perfect but they are really not perfect so you can come back with a smaller brush and fix those parts okay don't overthink it. Again, light touch, heavy touch, let go. Again, light, and we can even go like on, a, give it a little bit of a curve so that your leaves are shaped interest, in interesting ways, like that, for example, yeah. Don't be scared of them. I want to bring them closer to each other now because they're like a little bit too far from the stem. So let's go back there. I like that better. Okay, I need. we need to come to the vase and we will right down here. And maybe one in here. And you know how leaves like that, when it's curvy, when it curves, the little leaves over here, they will open more like a fan. Yeah. And then this part, they will close up closer like this. I hope this makes sense what I'm doing with my fingers here. So these guys are opening. Okay, because there is a curve happening. And these guys are getting close to each other. Okay, does this make sense? So this is one vine. Now the other vine goes this way over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to grab my leaf and put it right here and then maybe another one Whoa. and another one here and maybe a couple more okay now, in my painting, in the um, um, reference, there is a leaf. There is a huge rose right here, and there is a leaf right behind it. So there is more, okay? You may not be, you may not even see it even in the tracer. Well, there is like a little piece probably sticking out. But so you know that there is still one more leaf, okay? And then we have a 
um, uh, little branch going down the vase. Before you do that, make sure that your vase is dry, which if it's shiny, it is not. So I'm going to hit it with a blow dryer real quick. I'm going to mute for just a second. So it's like, uh huh. Now she's telling us, I am. Um, what am I saying? Oh yeah. So when you're using the blow dryer, use it on low heat, okay, or no heat at all, because you do not want to bake your acrylics. Okay. Somebody is asking me if they can do the same thing with watercolor. Uh, sadly, you cannot. You can use the tracer and put it on watercolor paper. Yes, but the technique is going to be completely different because you cannot, um, uh, what's the word, layer the colors the same way we can do in uh, acrylics. Watercolor is super transparent and it's not going to like that. That would be a big mess. Watercolor is more like, um, I don't know, think like paint by number. Maybe, like you do not want to, yeah, so there's one going down this way. And then let's add another one here. And maybe another one here. Okay, so this is plenty of that. I'm going to rinse clean this brush. And I'm going to grab my small round, the... It says that it's number six. It's literally, it's hard to say if it's a small or a medium. I guess it could be a medium, right? It doesn't matter. Use what you have. It's all going to be okay. <laughs> medium. So I'm going to make it wet. I'm going to grab some of the same green, okay? And now I'm going to go ahead back and kind of fix the shapes that I think need fixing. So in my garden, I have, um, I've planted peppers. They said they were salsa peppers, so they are hot. <laughs> And they are super long. They're not ripe yet, so I haven't pulled them out. They are bright green, like this green color. They are super long and curvy, like, <laughs> like curling onto themselves. They're amazing. Super interesting to look at as they develop. And uh, I was looking, I'm looking at these leaves and they just make me think of those peppers. My garden is at that point where I see fruit coming, like lots of fruit, but it still needs to ripen. And you know, like this, <laughs> this way, it's like, okay, come on, come on, come on. Although I did get to eat one of one cucumber today off of my vines. So that was, that was pleasant. So as you can see, I am just fixing the tips and I'm looking back and checking if like there is anything, like sometimes when you do this one stroke, like there will be, like like here see white showing the background you can still see it yeah <sighs> hello i found you okay cool welcome chandra said i'm curious are you painting this i'm sorry i don't get the question
Are you asking me if this painting is a recording and I'm just speaking over it? Somebody says, it's my first time. I couldn't find you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know there's, um, there's a learning curve a little bit to this because every artist has their own kind of the way we do things. And I, I used to teach directly on my page, but then I realized that one, I have no way to stay in touch with people. Two, Facebook can shut my page down at any time as they please, as they have done to a couple of my friends. And three, I get, when I do lives, people like jump on lives and start like spamming and, you know, doing weird stuff. And I decided that I do not want that. And so I just decided to go into a closed group and have that, have that kind of safety, you know, a little bit. Because I also know that once in a while I get um, younger people painting with us and I really do not want them to, to see one of the unpleasant, um, you know, comments. That's not necessary. This can be this can be done without it. Chandra says, I ask him Sue. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, because it didn't tag anybody, so I thought you were talking to me. There we go. They're shaping up. Okay. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> you know, as you paint, especially as a beginner, tell yourself that. Like you, you paint that leaf and it's shaped up pretty. Tell yourself, say, oh, this is pretty. I did that. Oh, this is cute. Instead of going into the, oh, I can't do this. Oh. Oh, I'm too slow. Oh, she's going too fast. You know, if I am going too fast, um, uh, maybe like lots of people would just watch for the first time and then paint with the replay when they can pause. Or they will start with me and go as far as, far as they can and then... Uh, you know, and then watch your replay again. So give yourself some grace, okay? All right. There is this weird yellow something. I have no idea what that thing is, okay? It was just like I was just painting some something abstract and I was having fun and it was loose this yellow thing. Does anybody know what it is that I painted? I have no clue what that is, but I really, really like it. So let's grab the, uh, like a smaller round brush and we're gonna grab some of uh, um, um, primary, primary yellow with a little bit of white on it. Okay, whoop, dropped. And I'm going to mix it right here on my plate gently and maybe add a little bit more of that primary yellow because yellow is super transparent. And so if I just put it on top of green or somewhere, it's going to, it's not going to be good. 
Okay, now make sure your green is dry before we're gonna start doing something else. I'm gonna mute you and I'm gonna dry. And unmute. Obviously, I didn't mute you. I mute myself, but you know, it's words, 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 right? Words, 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 whatever. <laughs> okay, let's put that right here. It's kind of hanging. I probably should have painted it first before I put my leaves in, but that's all good. So that one is shaped. So that's my flower, that's my pot. So that one is kind of going this way. Okay, so I like to, with this one, I think, we're gonna start with the top also, with the tip. So put the tip like this. Can you see it? Yeah. And then the next leaf is going to stick super close to the first one. Just like this. If you still can see a lot through your color, add a little bit more white. And if you feel that your paint is not yellow enough, you can just come back, like you can do the first coat like here, I have to add white. My leaves are showing. I don't like that. I will just come back and add a little bit more um, color to this. And that's okay. And it's okay if a little bit is showing. There's going to be more added on top of this, so it's not... Just don't worry, don't worry about it. It's all about layering, layering and not being afraid. So see how, again, we're doing this on the bend, on the outside of the bend, the leaves open, yeah? On the inside of the bend, they kind of get smooshed together again. So that's what, that's what's happening here. There. Yeah, uh, I don't know. One more for good measure, right? Just to make sure everything's covered. Yay, I got hearts. Thank you. I'm rinsing my brush right now. And Here's what's happening. So in the original one, I had leaves that were more of an olive shade, but I really want to add bright chartreuse. So that's what's happening here. If you want more of um, olive kind of darker shade, add yellow to this yellow, yellow, primary yellow to this. And uh, I think it should darken it to the point where like it should take you where you want to be, uh, primary yellow. And if not, then maybe like a tiny, tiny drop of primary red. Okay. But I'm grabbing my chartreuse with my smallish, medium size round brush. And I'm going to add some smaller leaves starting here. And it's the same way drag push drag <laughs> kind of thing okay same um uh, it's the same stroke 
but this time they kind of overlap a little bit onto each other. See? Oh, well, somebody got carried away and got a whole lot of paint. And so she's going to have to add more leaves to this now because that's just a random leaf. Okay. And we want to repeat it somewhere else. You do not want to just like create a color like that and then don't do anything with it. Okay. So we're probably going to put some. Okay. It, that was not. I'm trying to go with the um, reference, right? To not confuse you too much. So there was a branch that goes over the yellow branch. And this will work. If your yellow is too wet, go ahead and dry it before adding anything else let me know if i'm confusing you <laughs> hope not sure hope not oh look how lucky that leaf it just kind of grew into the branch now it now has a place to live. Okay. Now in the reference again, see there's tiny leaves over here sticking out from behind this huge rose. So let's, well, let's put those in. Maybe not too much. Now see how I do a wiggle, push and wiggle. And it kind of gives this uh, variation of the leaf something more interesting. Something that maybe you think, oh, I wonder what that plant is. Where did she get it from, right? Okay. Maybe here. All right. Okay, I think we're good on leaves. What do you think? Oh, one more here. One more here. You know, just add them. You cannot mess this up. Like, the more weird they look, the more fun it's going to be in the end. Uh, is it possible to wipe the yellow leaves off? It's turning out to be the same color as my background, and it's not showing up. I've made a mess. Okay, leave them be. Let them dry, and then add a little bit. Maybe, maybe add a little bit of red primary red to your yellow and uh, make it a little bit more orange. You can do that or you can do, um, you can add a white outline to your yellow leaves and they will stand out. Okay. Don't wipe off anything. You're good. It's going to look good. Trust me. <laughs> okay. Just when I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be adding green outline to this, to the yellow leaves. You want to add white or or green. You know, it will still stand out. It will still show up pretty good. Okay, wipe this. I mean, clean this brush. Okay, now we're gonna go into purple. Just grab your dark purple. Okay, and find your spots somewhere here. And you're just gonna start adding shapes like this, two strokes, one, two, okay? 
one, two, like a little heart. One, two. And if your paint is a little bit more transparent than you would like it to be, uh, grab a little bit of that lavender that we made. That's what I'm doing. I'm adding it into my purple. It will still be purple. A little bit, okay? Don't put a lot of that in there. One, two, one, two. One, two. And just add a whole bunch of these. And as you go up and away from the base, start making them smaller. They do not need to be perfect at all. They're just the background for, for the flowers. There. And then maybe, maybe look for spots that need a little bit more. Just add it. Okay. Um, I trust you. Okay. Um, uh, I'm late to start because of my timeline. Is there any way I can go to the beginning to start my painting? Sadly, while I'm live, I don't think there is a way you can do that. I don't really know. But um, I will have the replay. The replay will be posted tomorrow. And really, as soon as the live is over, which would be probably in about 45 minutes to an hour, so as, as we're done with this, um, uh, the replay will be available right away in the group just for the live. Okay, so here goes the other one. The other one, purple flower, is more shaped like a ball. So we're just gonna do these little kind of things. Yeah, oh, I'm out of frame. I'm showing you out of frame, just like that. just kind of make a print and make it like a shape in a ball and just leave it. And then we also have another purple branch hanging through here, right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh no, hold on. Sorry, you guys, my dog. Cassie, no. Okay, sorry about that. You know what? Do not mix the the nine year old who forgets to put his shoes away with with a puppy in the house. That doesn't mix at all. Doesn't work together. Okay. So we have these purples right here. Just kind of randomly bring this down, but don't put it on the table. Keep it hanging, okay? Maybe add a couple more if you wanted. Just kind of move it. Nick, you may not have that shoe. Uh-uh. She was so funny. <laughs> Okay, so now these purples need to dry. And uh, we're going to start creating those roses. And I'm afraid I lied to you guys because we are going to need a little bit of black with this because this is super, super dark. So what I'm going to do, 
is I'm going to put a tiny bit of black right next to this white. And uh, I'm going to mix a light gray. So what's going to happen is that we need to, and it needs to be really light, okay? Because we need this color to block the under layers. So if we just start painting with our pinks, we'll still be able to see all the greens and like all of this beauty happening in the background. And we do not want that, okay? We just want our our pinks and yellows and pretty flowers, right? So we're going to need to block that a little bit. And I like to paint my flowers with the large round. So I'm just going to load it with gray. Okay. And over here, this is the first flower that I paint right here in the bottom. Okay. So I'm just going to create kind of a shape for it, like a placeholder pretty much. That's a placeholder for the flower. And I think I have more space here on this painting. So I'm going to make it slightly bigger. And that's good. Then I'm going to paint the placeholder for the other with the second small one. And the second one, it's slightly bigger than the first one I painted, right? But it's not the largest. Just a placeholder. And I'm picking up a little bit of green on here. And you know what? It's fine. It doesn't matter. And now I'm going to do the placeholder for the largest rose. And that's going to be right here. And it's going to be a huge flower. So that goes up. Oh, see, all my greens are kind of covered by it, but that's OK. Picking up a little bit of purple with that. That's fine. Okay, so the placeholders are drying. The color looks like the color of silver. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Wouldn't that be awesome to paint it silver? Like to do all this bright, all the bright colors and then add silver roses to it. Ooh, that would be pretty. Okay, rinse your brush. So that's going to sit. We want this to dry. While this is drying, grab your small round or medium round, whatever you have, and grab your lavender on the tip. So now we're going to use light hand. So before, we would just press on a round brush right, to get things happen. Now we're going to use the light hand, and we're going to go into these little florals and you're just going to start kind of adding three, four, three to four little petals. Do you see that? Like this. Like here, here, here. Here, here, here. And in some places, four will be justified. OK? I absolutely love this lavender color. Ooh, so pretty. Don't overthink anything else. Just put those in. And it's okay if your flowers are a little bit still wet, it's fine. It will just add a little bit of variation to your color, not a big deal. It even looks pretty when there is some variation to it. Okay. Oh, 
blended in my gray. Don't do that. Stay above your painting. Okay, now I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna work on the branch that goes down here. Same way. And some petals, like I can't even see them. I don't know if they're there, but I'm still gonna put a little bit of lavender on that because it's just fun. Very light hand, don't push too much, okay? But even if you did end up pushing a little bit too much, not a big deal. It just makes it look different. Okay, now go back over here. And over here, I'm gonna not only add like little lavender things here to the petals, I'm also gonna add a little bit lavender like here in the spaces in between. Let's bring this up a little bit closer. Okay, right here, like in the in between. So there is not much negative space. It's all gonna be like one cluster of purple goodness. Maybe leave a little bit of negative like meaning the background showing through, right? But not too much. Rinse your brush. Somebody's asking me where I'm from. I'm from Ukraine. I'm from Ukraine, but I live in Omaha, Nebraska. Okay. Now go for your chartreuse and uh, I ran out of my white. I'm gonna grab a little bit more white and I'm gonna put it right next to my chartreuse if I can. Oh, that's a lot, oh well. So um, we're gonna make, so here's some white, right? And chartreuse, just mix it. What I want is a green tint. I do not want chartreuse. I want a tint. Something lighter than chartreuse. Here. I think this is what I want. Okay. Kind of uh, swirl your brush in the paint if you were using your brush for this and, and pull it out. I hope your family is safe. Yeah, they're, they're doing okay. Thank you. Um, so for these guys, I like to start at the top of the last leaf or whatever you call this and kind of, you know, pull the broken line, twirl it as you go, like make it, don't make it too straight and direct, like make it weird maybe that one was a little bit too weird but you know just connect your leaves all together This looks like one of those um, tropical, tropical plants. I love to look at them, but I kill them. I don't know what it is. Okay. See what we did here? They just we just added a little bit of interest to to our leaf story here. Okay, use the same brush, grab some white on the same brush. So that's gonna be much, 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 much lighter. And just go ahead and outline. Super right light brush, okay? Do not 
pushed us down hard at all. Just outline those chartreuse leaves and just, just go back and grab a white. And if your brush is out of control, just wipe it on the paper towel gently and just grab some more white. And just go back and keep working on those leaves. See, I'm adding a little bit more white here to the side so that they can see my leaves, so that they show. Just like that. And I picked up a little bit of green, so I just wiped it off on my paper towel and moving on. Really like the variety of color you can get by doing this. There. Okay. I think for next step, we're all going to need the liner brush. I hope you guys have one. If not, wing it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, for this part where the, um, like all these little, all these little petals and flowers are connected, and like all of this, we're going to need a small, small brush, okay? So let's grab, we're still working on, we're still working with this chartreuse color. I'm going to spray a little bit of water on my palette because they're drying. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and use my palette knife and try and find a little bit of yellow. Uh, yellow, which yellow you ask, primary yellow. I'm just kind of muddying it up a little. Mm. Wipe it off, get a tiny, a tiny, like I mean a speck of red to add to this. Yep, that's another good green color for us. Ah, fingers paint over. Okay, where's my liner? Make it wet. Grab some of this paint that we just made. That's, I just, here's what, um, I just want a little bit of a different tone that's not chartreuse here, okay? And let me turn this around so that I'm not there. You can see and I can see. So you're going to add this right on top of your lavender, three. And then you're going to just drag it somewhere. Just drag it and go back. Now, if you do not have the liner brush, you can still use the same round brush, but you need to use super light hand with this. All right, so we're creating little kind of flower holding heads. Which red? Primary red, sorry. Primary red. Primary red and primary yellow went into chartreuse. Literally a speck, okay? So just add it there. And look, not every flower here is going to have a stem. Some stems are going to be kind of hiding, and that's okay. So just add those. 
don't give it a stem. Don't try to make it um like I used to have this. I thought flowers needed to be geometrically correct. Like all symmetrical and like all of that. They really do not. The more variation you add, the better it looks. Okay. And if you hit some wet paint, just brush, clean your brush on the paper towel. Do not add any water. Just go through paper towel routine and back to painting. See how they're all connected now? Okay. All right, how are we doing? This takes uh, forever, right? It's like, oh, my hand's falling off. <laughs> are your hands falling off? Okay, now let's go to this one. And so I'm extending the stems. Something like that. And of course, we're going to add some spots of green, just random spots, because this is kind of a different view, right? And then this one is going to have a whole lot of stamps. Just. Coming from here. Okay. Our gray is red, is ready. Our gray is ready, ready, ready. So we're going to grab the large round brush, okay? And now with these, with roses, so you remember how with leaf, with leaves, we were like light touch and then push and then lift. With these, it's going to be pretty much push and, and turn, push and turn, push and turn, push and turn, like in different directions, okay? You got this? I know you got this. You'll do great. I know you will. Okay, so 
<sighs> this brush goes into white, one side white, one side magenta. White and magenta, just like that. And uh, start with the center. Just kind of do this. Okay. And then do the outer edge. Just random. If you need more paint, go grab more paint. And just stop there. Okay. For this rose, I think this one is a little bit more purple in it. So we can do white and grab magenta and maybe get a touch of this uh, purple that we had if you want it. If not, then just do white and magenta. I'm just going to grab a little bit of purple. So I see I have three colors on the same brush. The point is to not to come back and blend it, All right? So again, one, two, and then just go around it. Just make sure that your brush is full of paint and just leave it. There's some gray spots and it's good. That's what we want, okay? Wipe your brush on the paper towel And now we're gonna go ahead and grab the colors that we mixed. Let's grab that pink that we mixed. Full brush of the pink. Okay, so start with the center, then add some petals. Then with the same brush, grab some of this orange-ish kind of color that we used for the um, for the bottom of the painting right here. So I am just adding it to my pink. So there's pink in this kind of oranges apricot color. Okay, got it? I'm like, got it, got it. And then just add it to your rose. Just seriously, just put it in. And let it sit. Um, did you put yellow bottoms on the upper right purple flowers? Upper right? Yes, I did put the bottoms on them. Randomly. Very randomly and sporadically because these are turned the, wrong, the other side. Sonia has to tap out, have a bad headache. Oh, no, we'll finish later. Thank you so much. We'll share when I'm done. Have a good night. Of course, you're very welcome. I hope you feel better. Everybody, yes, when you're done, please share your paintings in the group. I love seeing them. Okay. Grab some white with the same paintbrush. Go back to your first rows. Add some white. Don't blend, okay? Just put strokes and leave it. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Wow. <laughs> Where did that come from? Now for this one, I'm just going to grab some white. And just, just add messy strokes. Don't worry about it. The biggest rows also grab some white. And... I just want to make sure that my rose is a covering, like that there is no background showing, you know what I mean? There. Okay, wipe your brush and the paper towel. Now grab just magenta directly from the pan. Okay, just add here and there. And here. And there. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Pretty in the brush. Clean, clean, clean. No, not really. Let's try again. Round brushes can hold a lot of paint in them, so they need an extra good clean. Okay, now I want this dry. Oh, see, that doesn't help putting my fingers in my painting. So I'm going to run my blow dryer and I'm going to mute myself for just a minute. All right, I can kind of, oop, I'm running out of my yellow, uh, primary yellow. So I'm just putting a little bit back on. And I'm going to grab my smaller round brush, medium size. Here it is, this one. And I'm going to do that same trick with yellow and white. I'm going to grab some yellow, put it into white first and I'm going to use that to fix my um, uh, leaves over here. Just to add a little bit more color to them so that they're not as transparent. Just there. That's good. Okay. And now I'm going to wipe it on the paper towel and grab as much yellow as I can on my brush. It will literally be dripping. See, there's a lot of yellow. And I'm going to do a yellow center with this one. And this one gets like yellow, some yellow petals. It's a messy yellows, yeah. And then for this one, well, in the um, in the reference, it really doesn't have a center, so maybe it really doesn't need one. But I want to add a little bit to it, so I'm just gonna grab red, primary red. Just give it a. See, just a little bit. It doesn't need much. Just lay down lines and move away. Yeah? Do not try and blend them in. Just kind of, kind of like that. Clean it up. Clean your brush. Okay, so I did tell you to post in the group. Um, I do approve all the posts in the group because people take advantage and start sharing stuff that doesn't belong in the creative group. Anyway, so you can do that. All right. Okay, now let's outline the leaves. I don't remember who told me that their leaves kind of ran in with the background. Um, uh, maybe do white if you wanted to. Or you can do light green, or you can do here, or you can do darker green. Whatever works for you. I'm doing lighter green. I'm gonna look 
at this and decide. You can hardly see it, huh? I'm going to change it to darker green. Sorry, you guys, if I'm confusing you. Just write on that, right? <laughs> There, much better. Now you can see the leaf. Start line it. And this one. Okay, and then the design on the leaf is, um, it's pretty easy. It's like, it's just like you cut in, cut a little bit out. And then add, cut a little bit more out. And then maybe add a little bit here and there. Just kind of nothing, nothing too hard, you know. Something like that. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. So it's like uh, putting branches in, but then they are adding more branches. So like the, from this one, from that one, from this one, and this one. And then these connect, and then that goes out. See? Just that. Okay. And now um, I'm going to suggest something. You do not have to do it. Obviously, you can do whatever you like. But I really want to. I think they will look so good. I would like to add little white dots to our lavender flowers. So I'm just going to grab some white paint. Well, as always, too much. And I'm going to use, let me see, this brush, the same round brush that I've been using, the medium size, but the back end of it. And I'm going to grab paint on the end of it. And I'm going to add white dot on the top of each flower. I just feel like it can use a little bit of white. OK. Don't forget to check out the events on the page. There's also, I think, I. Put all the events in the group. We have a pretty fun watercolor painting coming up. And of course, more acrylic paintings coming up. We have this um, uh, night view safari elephant painting coming up. It's going to be fun to, to paint. So easy, y'all. Super easy. What do you think? Did I spoil my painting by adding white dots to it? I think I like it. And while I'm at it with white, I'm going to add white highlights to this rose right here, the one in the middle. Just make sure not to touch any red to clean your, to have your white clean. I think it needed it, right? Definitely needed it. There. I like, what do you think? Okay, so 
Grab a black sharpie or tiny tiny brush or whatever and sign your painting because we're done. We are done, done, done. Are you going to make darker stamps? I don't want to. If you want to do it, go ahead and do it. I just realized that, yes, in my original painting, I had them darker. Yes, over here, right? Like this line here. So that they, they don't look like they're floating in the air. Like they do have light stems on them. And um, I don't know, I kind of like that. But yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and do that. You can just grab a dark green and and do that. I just like how airy this is. Like they're all like phew, airy. I like it. Okay. Let me know if you guys have any more questions. And We are going to wrap up. If you if you had fun and enjoyed it, uh, you can always go ahead and buy me a coffee. Links are in the featured post. You can find it there. All right. Have a great week. It's a perfect start for the week, isn't it? All right. See ya. Bye.